Hello and welcome to the ninth frame of the Labrook International Snooker Tournament. Five English players are competing against five from the rest of the world over 13 frames for this trophy, which will be awarded to the team scoring the highest aggregate points. Well, a glance at the scoreboard shows that short of an outbreak of snooker elbow in the world team, they are sure winners. But there's still the man of the tournament trophy to be played for and, of course, the cash prizes for all 50-plus breaks. This evening, playing for England, Fred Davis. And for the rest of the world, their captain, world professional snooker champion, Ray Rin. Your referee is John Smythe. Your commentator, Clive Everton. Right. Uh, tail? <laughs> it is a tail. Oh. <laughs> You've done something. <laughs> Ray Rin to break. So, the ninth frame of the match. Ray Reardon breaking off. Uh, could we start again? <laughs> and uh, snookering Fred Davis behind the green. Snookering him on all 15 reds. And the problem... And the problem for Fred Davis, of course, not only to avoid giving four points away, but to leave Ray Reardon in a safe position for his next shot. Not too happy with that, because the world champion has a reasonably comfortable opening red along the top rail. made it rather harder for himself by playing that fierce screw with it. <coughs> but uh, nevertheless, I think he'd get that one nine times out of ten. One. Fred Davis, nine times world champion in the 50s and 60s. One, Fred Davis. leaving the cue ball tight on the top cushion there so that Fred can't bring the cue ball back to a similar position. Ray Reardon, taking this long red into the top pocket. And catching the jaws for the second time in this frame.
Juan. Salam. Ray Reardon, world champion since 1973. Hey. Fit a screw back to get on that black. Fifteen. Sixteen. Slightly overheated. 21. Didn't really want to use the rest for this shot. Would have preferred to play a much straighter sort of shot. But that's a beauty. That's a beauty. And of course, the, the quality of their positional play is what really sets the top professionals apart from other players. Twenty-nine. <coughs> Ray Reardon, of course, has played once in this series when he hammered Rex Williams, the England captain, by 116 points to four. Twenty-nine, right in. Extraordinary shot, really, for a, the world champion to miss. Just a temporary lapse in concentration. Fred Davis, a very young and fit 63 years of age. One, Brad Davis. Comparatively rare to see a professional do that. 
miscuing in, in attempting that deep screw. Perhaps striking just a little bit too low at the ball, or perhaps slightly jerky cue action. England, of course, have failed to win uh, a frame so far in this series. 8-0 to the rest of the world in that respect. One. Attempted, attempted to scatter the pack in potting that black. Twelve. Fred again ruminating on his next shot, debating whether to take the cue ball into the pack or whether to play for the one red that's loose in your picture there. Seventeen. Into the pack, but the cue balls come rather awkwardly. Always difficult to gauge the precise effect of uh, going into a pack of balls, of course. Eighteen, Fred Davis. Ray Red, nine, Fred Davis, twenty. Twenty-nine, twenty to Ray Reardon, this frame. And of course, the rest of the world a huge 424 points in front on the series. The series, of course, being decided on aggregate score.
Five. Four. Right, right. Yes, that one's made him think a bit. <coughs> the uh, safety shot off this end red by the pink is uh, rather a tricky one because the blue's in the way. But there was a choice off the uh, other edge of the pack. <coughs> leaving Ray Reardon this possible long red. One. Six. Seven. Twelve. Thirteen. <coughs> Forty-six twenty to Ray Reardon. <coughs> twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-eight. A snooker to boot. Ray Raiden, sixty one, Brad Davis, twenty. One. <coughs> One, Fred Davis. With a difference of 40 and only 27 points on the table, it looks very much as if Ray Reardon, for the rest of the world, is going to give his team their ninth consecutive frame win. Putting the boot in there with another snooker. Very delicate attempt to leave a snooker back, but in fact he's presented Ray Reardon with a 
more or less straight red into so? the top pocket, straight yellow into the top pocket. Five. Nine. Fourteen. Twenty. Twenty. Right room. Let's see if he can pot the black this way. Oh, <laughs> uh, seven. Right round. <laughs> Final score, Fred Davis, 21. Ray Rune, 88. Not quite as good as his 116 in the sixth frame, but still a useful 88 there to the world captain, pulling them even further ahead. There it is, 315 plays, 797. Now, I think while he's on form, we might ask him to tell us a bit how he plays the game. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Ray again. Well, we're going to do a couple of end shots, actually, involving the last couple of reds, and... Most people can pot balls, but what we wanted to do is not so much pot balls, but to think snooker. Ah, and of course, we find ourselves in a situation here where we get the last but one red in a nice easy position, and the other red, as you can see down here, tied up on the side cushion. Now, there's been no point in just rolling the red into the pocket or even stunning or screwing the ball in and coming this side, because we must get this red into operation. So if you're going to roll the red into the pocket and take the white down to one of the lesser colours. Most people like to take the high colours and score more. But in the long run, that's not very good. Now we've got a nice situation where we can pot the yellow. And by putting some screw on the white hand uh, ball, by hitting it nice and low and sharp, we can get the white off the yellow and try to develop this red onto the centre pocket. Well, it's not bad, it's not bad. We'll just go through that, sir. It could have been better, but nevertheless, it, it's still a play. <laughs> obviously, obviously, these shots will not always come out right, but you can work on an 80% percentage basis, and providing that you're thinking in the right vein, then obviously you're playing the game as it should be played. And there's every chance of you doing these shots. And likewise, in an opposite situation, where we've got the top side cushion now, and therefore we're going to roll the red into the middle, leave ourselves a cut on the middle, onto the blue rather, into the middle pocket, which is then the white goes onto the top cushion, and we can push the red down onto the centre pocket. You're not always you're going to make the shot in any case. The thing about it, if you're thinking correctly, then everything's in your favour. Here we are, it's coming up now. Much better. <laughs> this is one of the situations which arose whilst I was doing one of the 147 breaks which I made recently. And I found myself after taking 12 reds and the 13th red in this situation. So we've got to pot the black to get these two reds disturbed because the only place you can pot these two reds, I'll just point them out for you, is here, was into the top pocket. And of course, by doing that, you'll never get onto the black ball. So we've got to dislodge those two balls. And we're going to screw the white off the black down below the centre pocket with right-hand side to take the white onto the ball cushion and to come up in between the yellow and brown to disturb those two reds. That's better, you see. <laughs> That's much better, you see. Much better. Yeah. Some good advice there from the champion, Ray Redden. Join us next week when you can see the second doubles match of the tournament with Graham Miles and John Spencer for England against Eddie Charlton and Alex Higgins for the rest. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>